Welcome to the FA Formula 3 magazine show, round two at the world famous Motodrom in Hockenheim, Germany. The stars of tomorrow competing in their second season event, together with the most popular touring car series in the world, the DTM. With drivers like ex Formula 1 star Timo Glock and Vitaly Petrov, uh, the actual DTM champion Mike Rockefeller, and leader in the Formula 1 champion Nico Rosberg, and uh, all the former Formula 3 driver Nico Hulkenberg. No wonder they're drawn to this. Yeah, lots of good memories. I spent uh, actually three years in Formula 3, two of them in, in the Formula 3 Euro Series back at the time, and it was it was mega racing. It's, I think, pretty essential. Uh, the Formula 3 teach me a lot of things because, you know, Formula 3 is a series where the, the technical regulations are open and you can pretty much develop the car. You can, you know, uh, give a lot of feedback as a driver and play with the setup a lot more than in other series compared to, like, GP3 or GP2, so uh, it was really important and a steep learning curve in my career and uh, I really enjoy watching Formula 3. Second round of the season, accompanied by Gerhard Berger, the FIA single-seater commission president. The Austrian has an eye on how the six rookies among the complete 27 driver lineup will compete. Uh, remembering the first three races in Silverstone, only one of the established drivers could take away a single race win. Uh, two races were won by rookies who were doing their first season in an F3 car, like Antonio Fucco, uh, Esteban Ocon, and uh, big expectations on Max Verstappen, son of former driver Jos. Uh, they're all putting pressure on experienced drivers like Tom Blomkist and Felix Rosenkreis. When you look back, when I was a rookie, my speed was there, but obviously you don't have the experience, and. A lot of situations are new when you are a rookie, but uh, I think that's what you can gain on, on being uh, on running many years. So um, I think they will have, they will face problems that uh, the older guys won't face. So it's going to be interesting for sure. Quite similar is the opinion of Tom Blomqvist, 20 years old and his third Formula 3 season. They seem to be very quick, very competitive. You know, they were at Silverstone, um, but we have to stop them, stop them this weekend, and then. You know, we can't have it that way. They can't. We can't have it that way the whole the whole year. You know, because um, in theory we should be able to, you know, fight those guys. But anyway, we'll see how it goes now. Um, but yeah, should be good, mate. And good news for the only woman in the field after problems with the team signature. Tatiana Calderon is here. Orange looks uh, looks good on me, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be able to still be racing here in the F3. Uh, FIF Free European Championship and of course Mirke has a lot of history in this championship uh, they were runner-ups last year so I, I couldn't find a better place to be to be honest hello I'm Esteban Ocon and I'm gonna take you for a lap in Hockenheim so we're our first corner a very tricky corner one of the hardest in the track um, it's the fastest, I said, 200 kph, so the turning is the important key. Then second corner, very late braking, uh, also hard on traction as uh, there is really poor grip, so the important is the exit and uh, take the exit well. Then focusing on the, on the straight, on the upshift, uh, third, fourth, fifth, now sixth, and then looking for the braking point and the airpin. Breaking 100 meters, missed a bit the apex there, a bit of problem in traction as I missed the apex. And then, uh, so the important is really the good exit there and the braking point. Then focusing on the sixth gear now, arriving on the braking, late braking important there, touching a bit the curb inside, and then also uh, don't need to put that much as the, this corner is flat. Now again, focusing on the shift lights, third, four, Fifth, very fast corner there, entry of the stadium, quite difficult, uh, tricky curb there. And now the sax corner. Sax corner, a lot of banking, so it's important to use it. Uh, second gear. Now the last part, the last two corners. Uh, important to push the entry of the first one and uh, to get a good exit on the last one. And uh, we finish with the lap. That was the lap with me, and uh, I will do everything for the race. Uh, is on Saturday.
Sadly, it was not the qualifying result the young Frenchman expected at the first event in Silverstone. He uh, reached all in, uh, he, he raced in all three races and managed to get on the podium. Here in Hockenheim, he's starting from P5 after losing a bit more than two tenths of a second to the Austrian pole sitter, Lucas Auer. Well, there are some very technical corners and also some very high-speed corners and uh, just a really interesting track where you have to put everything together to be fast. Well, the quickest rookie driver was 16-year-old Max Verstappen. He set the fourth quickest time in qualifying. I try to make a good start, try to win as many positions as you can the first few laps and then it's hard to overtake of course, but I think that's the main thing. Uh, very poor result for Silverstone winner Antonio Fuoco, the Ferrari young driver, is starting from P17. I'm Antonio Fuoco, I'm 70 years old, I'm driving for Prema Power Team and this year I drove for uh, Formula 3 European Championship. Yeah, last year uh, uh, I won the championship in Formula Renault. And this year I jumped to Formula 3. For sure the jump is correct because uh, the step was quite good. I work uh, with Fernando in uh, Ferrari. Uh, I train with him. Uh, I see the simulator when he drives. And I think it was a fantastic, fantastic experience. Yeah, Ferrari gave me a really big opportunity. I'm really happy because I work with uh, experienced and professional men in Maranello and for sure uh, uh, the Ferrari, he, he wants me to win this championship and I give the maximum from uh, my team Prema and for Ferrari. I think the Formula 3 was a really good championship and it will be really competitive compared to the other drivers and I hope to do that. For me it's the first year and, uh, and for the first race I think I want to try maximum experience and uh, after during the championship I want to win. Well, best wishes from team chief Peter Mucca for the 21-year-old Tatiana Calderon who's going to be starting from the back of the grid on race one. Lights out and underway then. Lucas Auer, the pole sitter in the orange car number three. Also the first row, Antonio Giovanizzi. And 20-year-old um, Italian driver. And you can see for the difference between a perfect and a bad start. 27 cars uh, on their way. The field rushing around the first corner. And Auer in the lead behind him. Ed Jones started from P3. Esteban Ocon started from five. His battle against number 19, Gio, uh, uh, Gio Vinazzi, for third spot. It is busy out there, full speed section through the Parabolica and uh, trying to find the perfect braking point for the hairpin. Best place to overtake on this track. Well, it's a tight squeeze. No problem for the first four cars, but behind them, Max Verstappen misses the braking point and hits Nicholas Latifi. End of the race for both drivers. Situation both know from the season opener in Silverstone. Yeah, not great. And not long before the next contact as well, arriving in the corner at the Mercedes Arena, where three cars in the uh, towards the rear of the field involved. The eight car of Beretta, the 12 of Toril, and Goddard in the 11 machine. 27 uh, Rosenkvist attacking the 21 Serralis. This is the battle for P5. Nice one as well. It's so close, this racing. A lot of ambition out there. A lot of it dented. Entrance into the Motodrome and the 21 Serralis caught by the 31 car of uh, Tom Blomqvist. And after all those incidents, a spectacular first round. The safety car sadly out on track and the chance to clear the debris. And plenty of it there was. The field then closing up together once more. See the frustrated uh, Canadian Nicholas Latifi at the side of the track. And the hairpin you can see, Ocon. Huge lock. Saw the start already. I had a little issue with the upshift, but after that in the hairpin, I just break too late, locked the front, and I couldn't stop anymore. I tried to avoid, but there was no room anymore, and I crashed into him. 
But yeah, it's the second time he's hit me fr from behind, just missing his breaking point, completely his fault. Uh, I, I don't know if, when he's going to learn. I hope he does because uh, for sure he's ruining his chances at doing good in the races and other people's chances as well. Ooh. After five rounds, uh, the three car hour in the lead, five laps that is, uh, followed by uh, Jones in the six car, the two of Ocon King in the, the five car, the 27 of Rosenfeist. Next tough battle at the hairpin and uh, Jim Kawiak against Agostini. And some aerodynamics getting lost here, or indeed amended. Um, example for a fair fight for P5 between the veterans, uh, Rosenfeist and uh, Blomqvist. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Here it goes. Yeah, keep it fair and square, and uh, keep it entertaining, I think, is the watchword. And, well, the uh, so-called veterans in this, Rosenfeist and Blomqvist, really giving themselves uh, plenty of respect out there, but uh, great racing nonetheless. If you're going to have uh, racing, you've got to have cars on the track, remember. That's a note for the young lads. Um, middle of the race then, and Lucas Auer just increasing the gap. P2, Jones, and P3, Ocon. Nicely spaced at this point. And lap 15, the end of the race for Roy Nisani coming out of uh, P18. Looks expensive. And problems with the front wing for the 10 car of John Bryant Meissner. Silverstone winner, Antonio Fuoco. It's running 12th, started 17th. Got his fan club, as you can see. I don't spend a lot on banners, but yes, points for effort. Winner in Hockenheim, the opening race, Lucas Auer with a huge gap of over seven seconds to Ed Jones in two. Running third, uh, Jordan King in the five car, and a big drama in the last uh, lap for Esteban Ocon. Only P9 due to fuel pressure issues late on, what a shame. That's how they finish then. Well, you've got to be good, both you and the car, for the entire race. And well, those fuel issues late on for Esteban Ocon must have hurt a lot. Finishing in ninth place, as you saw on that tail end of the graphic. There's your result of race four then. Our and Mucca Motorsport dominating. A very special and emotional moment for Gerhard Berger, the FAA single seater commission president, giving the winner's trophy to his nephew, Lucas. Yeah, yeah, no, also for me it's really nice. Uh, of course, Gerhard is a very big person in Formula One, Formula One and uh, it was just everything very special. And then I saw him gradually getting closer to me and I was like, well, I'm not going much quicker, so he must be going slower. Uh, and sure enough, he had a bit of a problem. And at that point, I think it was just you know, a little bit of lack of power. So I managed to overtake him uh, and finish third. Yeah, last lap I had a fuel pressure problem. It came on, but uh, I don't know if it's uh, not enough fuel or fuel fuel pump problem. But uh, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't keep my place, and everybody overtook me. Next up, more racing action from the FIA Formula Three European Championship in Hockenheim. Stay with us.